Well, it's a great day in the kingdom of God. I want to welcome everybody tonight to uh, Dave Martin Ministries Business Breakthrough. And uh, gosh, hard to believe we are already on week number four. So, whoa. <laughs> I, I just dis just discovered something. Hang on a second to me here. Oh, how embarrassing here. I, I, I put my... Uh, uh, the the, the uh, event on another computer screen to see what happened and realize there's a delay of about 10 seconds. So uh, now I know what not to do. <laughs> so, hey, Raquel, you ready for tonight? I am so ready for tonight. I am excited over what I have to share with you. I know that it's going to be impactful and that you'll be able to start using some of the things that I share with you even after the webinar. Awesome. Well, for those of you, this, this might be your first uh, event, first webinar. We want to welcome you. And uh, for those of you that uh, have been here before, welcome back. We are so excited about what God is doing, the testimonies. I'll tell you what, almost every day, not every day, but almost every day, I hear another testimony of how God is answering prayers, opening doors, and uh, just doing what God does. But uh, when you start praying, and that's what, that's what this ministry is all about more than anything. And we started this 27 years ago. And uh, as I was praying back uh, 1990, asking God, how do we get the wealth of the wicked? And he showed me that one of the key aspects is business people. And uh, the business people are positioned in a place where you're unlimited, per se, in terms of how much money you can make, uh, whether it's in sales, more commissions or profits. But what God showed me back then is how when people understand principles and precepts of operating your business in the supernatural, recognizing that you and business are as much in ministry as I am, traveling the world with a vision to see 100 million people get saved, disciples, and serving God. But when you're in business and you have a heart to support the kingdom, I'm at the front line and you're at the supply line. But the front line is only as good as the supply line. But what God showed me is people know to pray for the front lines. You know, the, the, your pastor and, and people that are missionaries and ministries like ours that go around the world. But who prays for the supply line? Usually not many people. I've never seen a ministry in the church. Uh, well, I've seen a couple now. I shouldn't say, shouldn't say that. But for many years, I've never seen any ministry in the church that really catered to praying for business people. But because you have a heart to make money for the kingdom, you're a target for the devil. And many business people wonder why they lose sales, why they lose contracts, why things aren't going as well as they should. Never take into consideration that the devil is very good at uh, causing problems. So anyway, we started this ministry 27 years ago and uh, around the world doing conferences, seminars, and then monthly meetings where you know I was in a city like I live in the Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. So for years, we had a, a monthly meeting. And the whole idea, what God showed me, is teach people how to get God involved and then put people into groups of three where they pray for each other every day for the course of 30 days. Now, I'm not going to take much more time to talk about that because that's what we do next week. I want to invite you to register. The registration page will be up at the ministry website here, davemartinministries.com, within a couple of days. But you'll be able to register because every Monday we have to register. But you'll be able to register for next Monday. The first Monday of the month is always an uh, introduction to the ministry. And uh, when we did our first one of these here as a webinar event, the uh, first Monday of uh, August, I asked Raquel to come on board here and share her testimony because she's been involved in the business breakthrough for many years and it made a big difference in her business. Mm -hmm. So I asked her to share uh, to be part of that. And uh, I'm telling you what, this gal knows her way around the computer. We were just talking before the show started and she was doing webinar events every night. Now that wasn't an exaggeration, was it? No, it was not. <laughs> That's how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> so when we did our first one, we, I, we had a couple of challenges and Raquel, do, I do this, do that. And uh, anyway, because of her experience with Business Breakthrough, because of her her great webinar presence and technology. I said, Raquel, would you pray about being a co-host with me? 
So she did. How long is it going to take you, Raquel? I think it was like 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Yes. Yeah, all it took her to figure out, yes, God wants me to do this. Yes. So anyway, since then, uh, Raquel's been uh, just a delightful co-host with me for our business breakthrough sessions. And uh, tonight you're going to hear from her, uh, from her vast uh, resources of, of experience and knowledge. And uh, basically, before I turn, turn her loose here, uh, let me just give you a little bit of a uh, of a overview to the plan with business breakthrough because you know I would encourage you to be, be a part of this. But the first Monday of every month, which is coming up now here, be October first here, uh, next week Monday is introduction and the orientation. So what we do is we help you to understand the principles and precepts of how to get God more involved, and then every month we have two guest speakers. And which is Raquel tonight, and she's going to be talking about uh, how to get everything that you want. But uh, the the first Monday is what we call introduction. The second Monday is the most important Monday of the whole month, and that's where I teach for, for about an hour on how to get God more involved in your business, different principles and precepts of operating your life and your ministry or your business, because your ministry. For many people that are in business, that is your ministry, but how to operate in the supernatural. And um, then what happens is right after that teaching, we send everybody to a, a page where they fill the form in and they put down their objectives for thir the next 30 days, what they want to see God help them with. And then, then three to six months, goals and objectives, and then long range objectives. So they fill their form in. And then we in the ministry office here, we go through those forms, try to find common denominators that put people into groups of three. And then those groups of three, they make a prayer agreement, a covenant to pray for each other for two minutes a day. Doesn't sound like much, but I can tell you 27 years of experience, you get two people praying for you two minutes a day. And the idea is from the Old Testament of the Bible, the Aaron and Ur concept where Moses was helping Joshua at the front line. In this case, uh, Moses was the supply line of the Spirit of God. But as long as the staff was over his head, uh, Joshua or Israel prevailed. But he got tired, so Aaron came and held up one arm. Ur came and held up the other arm. And what happened? They won. And for you, victory means more sales, means more profits, means more success. So that's what these two people do. They undergird you, one, one on your left, one on your right, and then you do the same. You're the right and you're the left for two other people. But it's amazing. And before we come, before we get started in your teaching, just give a two-minute overview for those that are new here tonight. What what this has done for you and your ministry or business, I should say. Yes. Um, when we first, my sister and I first um, started uh, going to the business breakthrough, you know, we were at a certain level in our careers. Um, fast forward, we're still using the same principles that we learned from Dave, and we're both at the top of our game at our um, day jobs and, um, you know, working on our dream jobs. We love our day job. Um, but, you know, we know we have these other things that God is also calling us to do. So we've gone to the top of our game. And for, for women, especially Latina women, that is something that we may able to break some barriers. Um, even my sister, she'll get on, she was getting on calls with management from across the nation. And everybody was being kind of reamed on for not making their, their sales. And they get to my sister and she was just like thousands <laughs> of dollars over. They're like, what are you doing over there? It's because she's anointed to do what she is called to do at a level they're not familiar with. So that was last week's <laughs> teaching or two yes. weeks ago, I should say. Yes. And so she is continually hitting those sales numbers um, over and ab above. So we're having that 10 times greater anointing happening where we're flowing in wisdom, we're flowing in counsel, we're flowing in might, we're flowing in all these things that we're being taught. We're implementing those things that they've taught us before. Uh, back then and then getting the refresher. So it seems like every time we're about to have a breakthrough in our lives, God sends us back to the, <laughs> <laughs> and the doors get open. So we're very excited about that because um, especially in my business um, and what I do, I do, I'm in finance and credit collections and I do a lot of global work now. There aren't uh, many women that do this in that specific field. And there's definitely in, um, not many Latina women who do it. So we know that, I know, 
that my source is God and that um, I'm able to implement all those things that you've been teaching us over the years. And it just, it works. You know, if, Amen. if you work it, it'll work. <laughs> it'll I, work. Heard, I heard someone say, if it works, don't fix it. <laughs> and, uh, Leave it alone. Just do it. It's, you know, it's yeah. simple. Um, and I love that. Raquel goes back, gosh, well, probably 15 years when she first got introduced to the ministry in Chicago with Bill Winston. And I think yeah, 2000, I saw, something like that, we started working together. Yeah, so I saw him on television. Um, and it's it's funny how God works, right? Because there's that favor factor um, that people just like you and they don't even know you. And I, I looked at Dave and I was like, I liked his face. I liked his energy. <laughs> and, I, and then I saw him again like two days later and another another TV show. And I was just like, huh. And then I look him up and then I tell my sister, who I drag everywhere. And I said, oh, let's go to Rockford. And she's like, what's in Rockford? I'm like, Dave Martin. She's like, who's he? I was like, he looks like a cool grandpa. Let's go. You know? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so we road tripped it. And, you know, we, we went every um, every month you know, for years. And we got so much out of it, like I said. And that's how you know it's really good ground because the seed that was planted in us still is bearing fruit. And that's what trees should do year after year, season after season. It should be bearing fruit. And that is exactly what my sister and I um, got by being connected with Dave. By the way, now we got got to get started here because my goal is always to get people on by by. (laughs) <laughs> 15 minutes after we're only a couple minutes away but yeah. uh, one of the things her sister does that is really working well for her is an ebay business and uh, uh, so i started telling you about the different mondays so monday one is introduction that's next monday the following monday the second monday of october always the second monday is again the most important monday and that is where i'll teach for an hour and then we'll fill out forms and break into groups of three. Then the third Monday of the month is where we share a business idea, how to uh, get into business, how, you know, different multi, we had two multi-level ones last month, we had, or like last week, just incredible, broke our record of, of, of response actually, but we talked about the uh, Gia Wellness and, uh, and how to protect yourself from dangers of radiation. That was an immense success. So uh, next third Monday of the month, uh, Raquel's sister, Josie, is going to talk to you about how to start an eBay business. Mm-hmm. She was telling me a couple of days ago, and I was talking to her about it. You know, David, she said it's as easy as going to the dollar store, getting some things that are cheap, that are, are nice things, buying some, and then putting them on eBay and making four or five times the amount of money. Anyway, she's going to tell you about that. Uh, that's going to be our third Monday. Fourth Monday of October is going to be Dr. Clyde Rivers, and uh, he he's I mean one of the hottest commodities in the world right now, all over the world. Works with over a hundred different leaders of nations, but he's going to be talking about civility and uh, how to uh, incorporate that into your business strategy. And uh, so anyway, next Monday we're going to have Dr. Rivers on for 15 minutes, kind of giving you some ideas and what he's going to be talking about on his third Monday and Monday night. We're also going to have this coming Monday night, Josie on for 10 or 15 minutes, give you a little teaser on starting an eBay business. Then the fourth Monday, here we are, we bring in somebody to teach you how to do better business, how to improve your sales, how to improve improve your profits or different strategies in that that regard. So that's our strategy. Uh, for every Monday, and when there's a fifth Monday, like we're going to have in October, the fifth Monday is going to be about calling an open forum night, where we'll have people share testimonies and ask questions, and let's kind of flow and, and see how that works out for our first fifth Monday of the month. So with all that said, Raquel, are you ready for uh, a, a very excited group waiting to learn from me tonight? I'm ready. We're going to go fast and furious, but I do have the file for you that I'm showing you that it's part of the free resource that I worked on um, yesterday for you. So I'm going to just start the presentation. And this is the missing piece for you and how to get everything that you want. 
So this is what you can expect tonight. You are going, if you come expecting and you want um, to make the most out of this time, you're going to walk away with a few aha moments. I promise you that. I guarantee it that as you press in, that's exactly what you're going to be receiving. You're going to be walking away with one or two practical things because I always make sure that I put the a lot of content in here because I want to make sure that the the investment of your time and your attention and your focus is well met. Um, but I also want you to be able to grab something and be able to implement immediately and see it work because when you get those you know quick wins, you feel motivated and then you'll you'll end up doing the other things that I'm going to present to you. And I do say that you're going to leverage the information um, so you can start building right away. We're going to talk about how to build the right team in order for you to have a successful project. Um, I'm a project person. I love doing projects. I know how to not only the uh, and the conception part, but the, the in-between, right? Between the conception and the birth is the in-between. How do you nurture that? How do you get the right people in the right places at the right time so that way your project is massively successful? So I'm going to share what I do and how, why all my projects are always um, met with success when I do them. So we're going to be unlocking emotional intelligence tonight. So what is emotional intelligence? It is the ability to be able to check in with your own energy, uh, to see where you're at emotionally, to gauge your um, energy. Is it high? Is it low? And then be able to actually almost manipulate yourself in order for you to leverage um, all the giftings that are within you. At the same time, since you are now self-aware, you can then use that same strategy with people that you're meeting, you know? So how do you to, uh, connect with somebody else. Maybe they're in a different energy. Maybe they're they're in a different, uh, they're in an opposite, polar opposite personality cluster. So how do you connect with them if maybe they're triggering you um, or you're feeling uncomfortable around them? So using emotional intelligence is a way for you to leverage every opportunity that is given to you. It's important for you to be prepared because, you know, as, as uh, Christians, a lot of time we just we want to pray and we want to show up and we want, we want God to show up. We're like, oh, we can just be ourselves. Yes, absolutely. But the truth is, is that people, the rapport means really all people prefer others reflecting themselves. So <laughs> if, when you show mm -hmm. up and you, you reflect someone else, they feel comfortable with you. Then they can drop their walls and they can hear what you have to say. And if they trust you. And even if they don't do business with you at that moment, if they like you, they will recommend you to someone else. But if you don't know how to connect with them in a positive way, to leave a positive impression, to you know use every toolbox that is available for you, then it's almost, because I've talked to a, a few business people, it's almost um, taking the lazy way out. Like, oh, God will just show up. Yes, but you still need to prepare. This is part of the preparation process. You know, we need to prepare so we can be available to every opportunity. And this is the way that you can do that. So some people are naturally gifted in this. You know, we find we call them charismatic. You know, they have a lot of charisma. They know how to connect with people quite quickly. That's part of their natural gifting. But only because you don't you may feel like you don't have that. You do have that inside of you. You do have the capacity. That's why you're called to do business. You need that. You need that favor factor. And many times you, we try to lean, um, and not that we're not supposed to because we need God as our partner, but he gave you abilities. He gave you a, a brilliant mind. He gave you also the mind of Christ. He gave you the Holy Spirit, who was your mentor, your teacher. You know, he gave you all these um, natural giftings. So you need to use them and cultivate them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, identifying personality clusters um, in ourselves and uh, in other people. And then in, in, as I'm talking about that, we'll talk a little bit about body language and body language. I can probably do another training just on body language alone because there's there's so much in that. Even in <laughs> even there are studies about, you know, how to pick up people's character. They call it personality traits. It's, it's really not personality traits. It's more their character traits by facials. Uh, you know, if they have, what kind of nose do they have? What kind of chin do they have? What kind of cheekbones do they have? Um, if you study those kind of things as well, when you're talking to someone, you can adjust your language. So you want to adjust your language, not because you're trying to manipulate them, but you want to communicate. And the reason we communicate is to connect. 
We want to connect and understand. That's the point of communication. And how are you going to connect and with somebody else if you don't understand where they're coming from? And when you understand where they're coming from, then you can take your feelings out of some things and you won't be hurt and you won't be uh, angry or you won't be bitter against against maybe a situation because you will have compassion for where they're coming from. Um, and compassion, if you if you listen to Dave's um, last um, uh, Tuesday night, he was talking about how compassion is the trigger, right, for supernatural things to happen. And so one of the ways that we can see the supernatural happen in our business is that when we understand where the other person is coming from, it triggers compassion for them. Um, and then you can you can be a better business partner or supplier for that person that you're speaking to. And lastly, we're going to talk about how to create that team. You know, when you're working on a project, whether it's um, a personal project or you know your day job project or your business project, how do you bring in these personality clusters in the right order at the right time in order for you to be massively successful? So what? Let me know in the chat, and baby's watching the chat for me, if this sounds like you or someone that you know. We're actually gonna work with um, DISC. I don't know if you guys, I love DISC specifically for personality types because the guy who invented this also invented Wonder Woman and I have an affinity for her. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many of you know that, but if you're ever on Jeopardy, the guy who invented DISC also invented Wonder Woman. <laughs> This is the influence. So somebody who is an influencer is the life of the party. You know, they're the person that when they walk in, they light up the room. If you're thinking of a color, it's like sunshine yellow. You know, they're the lover of people. They're very charismatic. You know, I love this. They're forgetting where they're going, but they're busy. You know, they're like walking. They go into a room and then they forgot why they walked in the room and then they walk back and they're like, OK, I don't I don't remember. They also get easily distracted and be like, "Ooh, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> they like shiny things, new technologies. They're always future thinking. You know, everything about them is is more fast paced. You know, they talk fast. They talk with their uh, their hands. You know, they're great storytellers. You know, though, if they call you, they might have to leave you for voicemails because you know, generally speaking, they're generally speaking. <laughs> uh oh, I can see me. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll leave you a few voicemails because they're still telling the story and then they might forget why they called you. Like, and they're like, the last voicemail, okay, I, I forgot why I called you. I will call you back, you know, and, and then they'll call you back or text you. That's why I called you. Um, if you're dealing with somebody who is an influencer, then they like to be appreciated and recognition is very, very important to them. So how do you use that in your emotional intelligence? When you recognize someone who has that kind of personality cl cluster and they're a high energy person, as we go move through the different personality types, it, you'll be able to see, okay, this is that person right now is in a high energy. So they might talk faster, they're gonna walk fast, they're, gonna, they're always they're thinking fast. And so if you're trying to engage them, there's certain things that you need to do in order to maybe slow them down. Um, so that way they're able to um, have a great conversation with you. Also, you know, if you're per a person who is, I mean, if you're not slow, you're just slower, <laughs> slower than the influencer then you might think that person's energy is, is overwhelming. So if you're an influencer, that's kind that's one of the things you have to know. These are some of the things that I want you to know. So your enthusiasm and your fun can really get you into trouble because what happens is that you're, again, squirrel, new technology, something that's fun. If it's fun, you'll do it. If you're enthusiastic, you'll do it. And as soon as that dies down in your energy, you're like, this is not fun anymore. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so then people think, well, then you're wishy-washy because sometimes you may not finish what you started because it's no longer fun for you. So if you are dealing with somebody if that's part of your project team, your staff, um, someone that you met or you're trying to do, you're doing business with them. You're like, oh, this person's kind of wishy-washy. They don't finish what they started. It comes back to really helping them connect back to the fun and enthusiasm and to the reason why they're involved in your project. So if you can trigger that back in them, they will bring the innovation. And we'll talk about innovation in a little bit. Also, you know, boundaries are good for you influencers and those in your circle. And so somebody who is an influencer, they're a people person, they love storytelling, they love connecting. But the issue with that, that they can be challenged with is harmony that they will, um, they will end up 
um, saying yes <laughs> when they shouldn't be saying yes because they don't want to hurt your feelings because they still want you to like them. And so they will pile on all these things that they have to do because they don't want to say no because harmony is so important to them. But the truth is you can't say yes to everybody. This is why clarity is so important. You know, clarity is power. So if you are clear of your business, of your business goals, if you're clear of your business mission, if you are clear about um, what you bring to the table, then you will be um, more powerful and you'll feel more powerful to say no and then say why. Like this is this is not really what I'm focusing on. Sometimes you just need a couple of scripts. Somebody offers you something. If it's not in line with your mission, then you need to learn to say no. Because otherwise, what happens is that you get overburdened and then you're wishy-washy. And then you, um, when you are stressed out, you, you, you can end up um, being kind of gossipy because you're so stressed. <laughs> you want people to like you and you're just like kind of blurting things out. So there's all these things that happen when you're stressed out and, you're, and you are the one in charge of your calendar. So if you have an influencer in your midst, you know, they, um, details, you know, influencer, that's not your enemy. When you give them too many details in the beginning, it's kind of like, and they'll, the thing is, is because they're charismatic, they'll nod at you and they're like, yeah, like they're listening. They're not listening. <laughs> Ask them a question. They didn't hear a word you said. So when you are trying to connect with somebody who you can tell is a sunshine yellow, who is a storyteller, very charismatic, you, you want to stick to stories when you're speaking to them. They love stories. And then if you can, you know, the more story, um, the juicier the story, the better. They'll kind of lean in and they'll be like, oh, yeah, and they'll share some stories as well. And then you can quickly connect with them. But don't give them in the beginning too many details. It's, it's not going to work. They're not the personality cluster that that works with. And a lot of people say, well, you know, stories sell. Not all the time, depending on who you're speaking to. But for an influencer, the stories do sell. So have a juicy story for them and you can, you know, they'll stick around for a while because they want to have a conversation. They love having a conversation. So let me know if this is you or somebody that you know, the nurturing steadfast, you know, your relationships are very important to you. Just like the influencer, that's what you have in common. You're a people person. You love your friends and family. You know, you love to share stories, but you're more of the salt of the earth. You're patient and deliberate. You know, um, you're very non-threatening. You know, those people, they're the ones who are the backbone of the business that if they, if that person was not in your staff, things would not get done. They're kind of like the kumbaya, you know, let's all get together. Let's all have harmony. The, the challenges that, that somebody like that has who's very nurturing is that they might feel overlooked because they're quieter. They're not, even though they're like the influencer where they love people and they want to connect and they want to work in a team because they really thrive in a team environment, they're not going to raise their hand. They're not going to, you know, toot their own horn. The influencer will because that's part of the story. <laughs> that they're telling. So they're going to toot their own horn. Uh, but somebody who's a nurturer doesn't really do that. And so what do you do if you're a nurturer? Or you have, if you're um, engaging with someone who's a nurturer. So with a nurturer, it's they kind of have this thing where they love to have a lot of details. Ironically, even though they get all the details, they can't still make a decision sometimes because <laughs> they're waiting for a precedent. They want to make sure that before they make a decision, they get enough information and then they want to see, you know, has this happened before? So they take, again, it's not that they're slow, they're slower because they're very, very deliberate and they want to make sure that the, that the decision that they're going to make, how it's going to impact the team. They're more team orientated, project orientated. How is this going to impact not only the, the here and now, but later? So when you're engaging with a nurturer, you know, you think of the color green, you know, so they're very nurturing, very green. They, you know, they have very flowy clothes, very comfortable cotton, you know, uh, they're uh, maybe wearing khakis. <laughs> There's like signature things about even the way they look and the way they speak. They speak at... Um, slower you know than the influencer um and you know again they might feel overlooked because they're overlooking their own value in a team environment in a conversation when you have when you're engaging with them you know they 
again, they have that same thing as, as the influencer, where harmony is so important to them. And so because harmony is more important to them, they won't value their own voice. And so that's something if you're a nurturer, that it's okay for you to say no, it's okay for you to raise your hand, you have total permission, you're the reason why things work. And so as you see yourself correctly, then you can come correctly to the table, um, expecting that as you raise your hand and as you give those suggestions, and you'll see how important you are to a project, that you really are the backbone. So we need to hear from you. So when you're engaging with somebody who's a nurturer in a business conversation, don't if you're an influencer, don't overwhelm them because you might you're having all this high energy and a nurturer, they don't have a high energy too, but they express it differently. So you as an influencer might look at a nurturer and thinking that person's not excited because they're not doing this, you know. <laughs> or they're not laughing loudly. You might misinterpret their engagement. But if you if you influence or slow down enough and start asking the right questions about family and friends and what's important to the nurturer and you know and and giving them some some conversational cues they'll open up and then you're able to slow down connect with them and then you can tell them the story and they will love it because they're people people too now if you i am a um, i'm all everybody's all four and they have a mix of it in my natural state, when I'm kind of like by myself, I'm a, I'm a green yellow. I'm a nurture influencer. Right now, I'm in my influencer nurture because <laughs> I'm with people. And so that's turned up a lot. So that's why my hands are animated and I'm trying not to get distracted with things. But that's my natural state. But when I work, I'm actually the other two um, personality types. And let's see. If this is you or somebody that you know, the expert, this is someone who is a concise or a critical thinker. They like to be in charge of details. These are the people that when you meet that person, um, they you can send them to your website and they will read every single page down to the terms and conditions. Who reads all the terms and conditions? Nobody. But they, <laughs> but they actually do. They love details. And for them, they like things clearly defined. Um, so that's why you can send these people right to a website and they will read every page. Now, uh, they'll get back to you six months later. <laughs> so you might think like, wow, that person seemed really excited about, you know, getting my, my, my link or um, checking out my products. But, you know, even if I've kind of like texted them, I've called them, they haven't called back because they haven't gone through every single page yet. So again, they are slower than the influencer because the influencer, they're the ones who are innovative, you know, big vision, future minded, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, but the concise person is more like the nurturer who likes to take their time and get some details. And so except that with the expert, this uh, concise person, they do have um, a commitment to perfection. And so what happens when that when you are committed to perfection, it's a good thing, but you can also be trapped with analysis paralysis. So this is something that you need to remember when you're dealing with someone who is has that expert personality type, who likes to go into the details, who is a critical thinker. Um, they actually, um, they're, they get attracted to the influencer because it, right, it's the opposite attracting with each other. Um, and they like the storytelling, but they can get easily overwhelmed because this is the kind of person who can't, you can put them in a room by themselves, no windows, <laughs> in a silo, and they're happy. You know, they are happy to be by themselves. Um, and actually, if you are this personality type, you probably, for the most part, um, ha have the most difficulty with emotional intelligence. And the reason is, is because you love details. You are very exacting. And because you're so exacting, a lot of times you put a lot of pressure in yourself, you know, and so you can be overly critical of yourself. And because you're over, you know, it's what God says, right? We love God with all we are. And then we love our neighbor as ourselves. But when you are overly critical with yourself, then you are going to reflect that on others. So unless you love yourself, you can't love other people properly. And this is manifesting in the business. This is manifesting through your personality. Now, God gave you that gift cluster for a reason, and it's a good thing. But when you are under pressure, 
sometimes you have issues with timelines because you like to be in the weeds because you like to, you you thrive on details and so then you end up not making a decision and that's what we get paid for we make decisions um, to bring the solutions and the more solutions that you bring to the table the higher you get paid the more you get paid but if you can't bring the solutions to the table because you're still going through the details you can miss opportunities and then people are going to miss out on you because you're the expert, because you know what's going on. So specifically for you, I wanted to say that if this is your one of your um, higher energies, it's kind of like a cool blue color. That if you think about colors, it's a cool blue color. Um, learn to make decisions and to finish things off faster. And the way you can do that is that you can just set a timer. When you have a task to do, set the timer for like 20 minutes. And when it dings, you're done. And then you have to let it go. Because you're a critical thinker and you like perfection, your challenge is, is being able to let things go. That it doesn't have to be perfect. It can just be perfect for the moment. And so if you're engaging with somebody who's an expert and you recognize that in them, make sure to give them credit. They like the facts. So for an influencer, we love influencers like to sell stories. This is where facts sell. This is where facts are important. This is where as many details as you can think about, you can give it to the expert because they want to know why it's working, who's using it, um, how long you've been in business, if you're, if you're um, a network marketer, how long that's been in business, the products that you're selling, any of those kind of things. You can just really hit them with as many details as you want, and they're just going to gobble it up. But again, they may not get back to you because they go into analysis paralysis and then they're, they want to know everything. <laughs> There's a time constraint problem thing there. So you have to know how to follow up with them and, and then, you know, put some timelines with them because, because of the fact that, you know, they do, they do spend a lot of time in the details. So does this sound like you or somebody that you know? The dominant, you know? So this is the person who thrives on results, but... You know, they love solving problems. They love getting things done. When you're thinking about them, they're like the alpha male, if you're thinking of that. You know, they're like a hot red color. Um, they love to be in charge. They love competition. They love challenges. They're naturally gifted in leadership. Um, they're really, really good at mo mobilizing people to solve problems and achieve the goals. And they're really motivated. So if you want to motivate them, right, that's emotional intelligence. How do you motivate somebody to do what you want them to do? <laughs> or to join your team to help you or to do business with you or to recognize or to recommend you they're motivated by doing things done and quickly so if you remember those things about the dominant how is your business going to help the dominant person get things done and get them get them done quickly again they're just like the influencer now right so we go back into the circle so they're like the influencer they like fast and furious they want to see results um, but these are things that they have to think about is that their focus is on the here and now. And so their decisions might be impulsive. So if you're thinking about who's an impulse buyer, it's probably going to be the dominant and the influencer. They have that in common. So if you're if they get caught up in the excitement and they can especially a dominant, they can see the vision. They can see how this is going to help the bottom line. They can see how this is going to be able to make them more efficient, run faster, get them get them what they want faster than they're going to impulse buy. The only thing about them is that results is what they want. And so they might compromise on accuracy. So because they want the results, because they want them and they want them now, they might end up compromising. So if this is your personality type where you're a hot red and, and you like to run it and, you like, and you're like and you a natural born leader because that's what dominants are, the natural born leaders, you, that's the your pitfall. That's the challenge that you have to make sure that you slow down enough or have people on your team that you trust that have these other personality types that you can tap into because otherwise, you th this is what happens, is that you end up um, wasting money you end up wasting your time because you made an impulse buy or an impulse purchase or an impulse contract with someone because you didn't go through all the details that you should have because it wasn't ac all accurate information. It sounded really great. You thought it was like the answer to your prayer. And then you're just like, let's go, let's go, let's go. 
Um, you also can recognize them because under pressure, they, they're, they can come off as a bully or rude. Or if you're talking to them, again, the body language is like, you can almost feel them. If they're talking to a nurturer or a concise person, like, hurry up. <laughs> they're like, time is money. Hurry up, you know, get, get, to the, get to the point already. So if, <laughs> if we're speaking to someone and they're in their high dominant um, energy, their hot red energy, that's something that you need to keep in mind. So if you're a nurturer, you know, you want them to understand. The thing with a nurturer, that green person, they want they want to make sure that you understand, so you have heart buy-in, and you're all in with everything you have to do, and the dominant doesn't care. The dominant just wants results. So you have to learn how what information you're going to be sharing with the dominant, and again, focus on the results, and focus on the speed of the results. Um, the other thing is what happens when they're in a low energy or they feel under pressure, they can be very hypercritical, demanding, short-tempered, and they're the person that just like, from one second to the other, they explode. <laughs> and they're telling people off. But you know, it's funny because once they do that, they're almost like, it's out of their system. And then, and then you know, and a couple minutes later, you're, people are scared of them. They're like, why are you scared? <laughs> they were ready to take it off to just, they've forgotten and they moved on. So... <laughs> somebody who's a nurturer who and it's funny because sometimes the nurturer ends up marrying or ends up doing you know it's it's attracted to the dominant and then your feelings get hurt like why are you why are you mad you know or there's still the nurturer is wondering why the, the person exploded and it's because they were under pressure and they and the nurturer took it personally because they're in that team you know let's let's be harmonious together um state and a dominant person just wants to is a task animal. Like I'm a task animal. So when I'm when I'm in my thing, I'm I'm a concise person and dominant. I'm a, so that's the other side of it. When you're in that side, when you're concise and a dominant, then you're a task animal. It's like let's go, let's go in the details. Next task, details. Next task. You know, um, as a double people person in my natural state, then I need to be careful because um, you know I, I I'll. I, I, I don't want to overwhelm someone with my energy. So when I'm networking, I have to slow myself down um, and then see who I'm connecting with. So that way I can release the right stories. If I'm going to be with a nurturer, well, that's great because I can tap into my nurturing part and I can go ahead and share those stories that are important to them. Family, friends, charities, those kind of things. Ministry work. They really love that. You know, if I'm going to talk to a concise person, then I can just go in my cool blue, tell a couple of stories and make sure stories have a lot of facts in them. Like, did you know, like, uh, you know, um, Dave had put it in the in the email. Did you know that people who have who have a high emotional intelligence make 25 percent more than those that don't engage in it? Did you know that that um, those who are operating in high emotional intelligence make an average thirty thousand dollars more than their counterparts? So that's why you want to learn these things because it'll make you money. <laughs> it'll make you money. It'll make you connections. And the great thing about business is that like um, at my business, one of my clients became one of like my best friends. That's the great part about doing business, doing network marketing, you know, connecting with other people is that you never know how those relationships are going to mature and you can't end up um, uh, like I'm, I'm more, um, uh, well, even though I'm more my nurture face, my a lot of my friends are the people that I love, including my sister and my my, my good friend who's a client. They're both dominant influencers, so they're both you know visionaries and and really good at storytelling and all these other things. So I tend to attract a lot of uh, DI people. <laughs> so before we um, go on to the next section about body language, do we? How are we doing in the chat? Uh, no questions at this oh. point. Okay. Uh, some connection problems. People are coming and going, but appears fine. Okay. Then we'll continue. Um, checking your body language. This is a, a very, very important. I wanted to just bring a couple things in before we go into some of those uh, body language things that you should be aware of when you are trying to connect with other people. Now, um, I don't mean to scare you, but I, you know, I have to give you the facts too, that when you are meeting someone, Especially, you know, and I want to say really in this space with, uh, with, with us Christian folk, God is a good God and he will cover you with favor and he is filled with grace. But we are still responsible to do our part and to do our best because Amen. in everything that we do, we need to do it to the glory of Jesus. You know, we need to, we're doing it with Jesus in mind. And so when we're running our business, it is, 
It is an act of obedience and it is an act of love and worship when we can do everything that we can to make sure that when we're presented the opportunity that he has preordained for us to have, that we make the most out of it. This will work in your interpersonal relationships, in your business, when you're evangelizing with people, this kind of stuff, it trickles. So if you will practice this in your business, it'll naturally start to ripple out in the other areas of your life. And when you're meeting people, you only have a few seconds, a few minutes to get them to um, to bring their uh, the wall down. Because what happens is that when someone meets you, they put you in one of four categories, friend, foe, indifferent, or mate. So we're, we're not looking for a mate now in the business. You know, we're looking for relationships. So that's out. Let's we'll take that out. And then for friends, it's, it's the equivalent of, do I like you? For foe is, I don't like you. And indifferent is where most of the time they're going to put you into, uh, put you in that category until you start speaking. And so until in your body language and what you're doing with your body language. So in your body language, we are picking up things from the other person that is not being communicated with verbally. And so 80% of the time, that ping that we're getting with the other person we're picking up in their body language is right. So that's why body language is important, especially when you're not feeling well, especially when you are encountering someone who has an opposite personality and they're going to rub you the wrong way. Of course they are because they're opposite of you. So, so you need to be aware of your state, aware that really only about seven to 10% of what you're actually saying is, is what they're actually hearing. Most of your communication is going to come from body language and your tone of voice. So this is important to remember as well, because sometimes you want these scripts and we want to do all these things and we want to try to communicate with a lot of words. If you can just communicate well and start really being self-aware, that's part of emotional intelligence, being self-aware of your own space of your, what your, bo- your body is communicating, what the tone of your voice is communicating, then you've already won the battle because you're more than 80% in. So if you can do that, if you can remember that, then there's only a couple things that you have to do. When I was, um, I was teaching this at a high school a couple months back, I had a partner at work and I had met with her on, we were doing it on Thursday and I met with her on Tuesday. And she's a millennial. And so I'm watching her body language and I'm showing her like the presentation and stuff. And I'm just looking at her. And then she says, uh, okay, read me. <laughs> so I do. And, you know, and I didn't know her from Adam, you know, so, so I tell her about herself and she's just looking at me like that is scary accurate. And I'm like, yeah. Um, I go, so why don't you tell me about a situation you're having? And, and one of her clients, um, she had a really hard time connecting with her. Her client is a baby boomer. And basically the baby boomer client was looking at the young millennial in her 20s, like, I know you have a degree in this, but how are you going to tell me what to do? You know, even though I'm paying you (laughs) and I'm paying this company, I can't believe they gave me you, basically, you know. (laughs) Uh, So I said, okay, um, tell me about her body language. So she did. And I said, she's probably doing this and this and this. And she's like, that's exactly what she's doing. I'm like, okay. So I gave her three things to do next time she has a meeting with her. What I didn't know was that she was having a meeting with her that Thursday morning. So we're Ubering over to the high school and she's like, oh my gosh, Raquel, (laughs) I had a meeting with the baby boomer this morning. I said, well, how did it go? She goes, she was doing the whole thing. You know, she was like, "Um, there's a, and I'll talk about it in a little bit, but how her body was posturing. And I knew she was cutting me off and I knew she wasn't listening to me again, (laughs) even though I'm, I hold the solution that she's seeking, but she's not listening to me because of my age. She goes, and I heard you in my head saying, adjust your tone, adjust your posture, adjust how you're looking at her. And so as soon as she did that, literally within five minutes, she saw the lady's shoulders move this way. Her whole, her whole body shifted toward her. She started to lean in and she went like this. And she said, tell me more. So what she was struggling with for weeks with this very important client, She had her eating out of her hands in five minutes just because she adjusted her body and her tone. 
she's like, if it was like magic, I'm like, well, it's science. <laughs> it's just science. And it's just things that, that, that you didn't know. So if you don't know, you know, you don't know what you don't know until you don't, and somebody brings it up. So this is why body language is so important. So let's talk about it. So when you, when you meet someone speaking your power voice on your power voice, I'm going to do it mine. So this is my power voice. It is an octave lower than my natural voice. And that is establishing dominance and confidence. So when you hear me in the first 30 seconds of our introduction, my voice sounds sound more um, confident. So how do you know, right? So if, if you put your hands on your neck and you start speaking lower, you'll actually feel the vibrations here. So you all can do it. Let me know how you're doing in the chat. So this is something even that if you look at Oprah Winfrey's beginning interviews, she talked more in her natural voice, but as time went on, she lowered the tonality of her voice an octave. You don't have to hold this very long, especially since you're not used to it. You just have to hold it for the first 30 seconds. So you can, you know, practice and be like, mm -hmm. Oh, that's great, Rachel. <laughs> really good. So you just yeah. <laughs> That's a little scary, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> just an Too active. Low. Too low. <laughs> Too low, you know. But you can feel that the so if you talk in your natural voice, you'll be able to feel that it almost feels more fluttery. And then if you talk a little lower, you can feel right here. That's your power voice. And that's what you want to start with because it's going to, you only have 30 seconds to make a good impression. The thing about impressions is that if you make a bad impression, it's going to take seven other impressions to undo what you just did. So it's really important to take advantage again of every opportunity. So start with your power voice. Now you want to look into the eyes of the person that you're speaking to. But don't stare. You're not a, you know, because you come off as a predator. <laughs> you want to be able to. And that's the thing is when sometimes, you know, you think, oh, I need to look in the person's eyes. And so you're looking at them and you might be really interested in what they're saying. So you're leaning in. Right. That's the form of interest. That's the body language. But now you're staring at them and now you're making the person uncomfortable because now you caught, you're sending a signal of hunting of predator. And so they might back off and you think, what did I do to upset them? Well, your body language was misconstrued. You meant to show interest, but you came off as a predator because of the way you were looking at them. So when I was doing, I was a career um, coach for Hase um, at their summit this year. And um, so I had a, a young lady come up to me for some career advice and interviewing skills. And, um, you know, beautiful young lady, very intelligent. Now your face is your face. You can't help... <laughs> You can't help certain things. So her um, her eyes, um, she didn't have much of a lid. And so because of that, her eyes looked very open and big. Right? Beautiful brown eyes, open and big. However, in an interview, she was more of a concise person. And because of the way she presented herself through her eyes, she's like, you know, I always go all the way to the top. And I haven't been able to get a job. Once I get to the top... They're not hiring me and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I said, okay, let's do this mock interview. And I'm watching her and I'm seeing her body language lean in and her facial expressions and all these micro things that are happening in her face. Now I knew enough to know that because she's a concise person and her, and her natural features that she, she was trying to show interest and she was interested in what we were doing, but her body language was actually sending the signal of a predator. So if they're trying to say, okay, now we have a couple candidates. And then at that point of the interviewing process, they're like, okay, who's going now is going to be, they're both great. We're going to hire one, one person or the other. What's going to set the person apart? Well, now they're looking at who's going to be best for their team. Right? So the girl, because of the way her body was structured, because of the way her tone was coming out, she came off as though she was going to be more aggressive. And she's just, she's like, that's not my intent. And I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> they probably were not, you know, well-versed in asking the right questions in order to, to change your energy. But they're trying, they're probably dominant. They just want to make a decision. They just want to go through it. And so once I helped her, then, then you know, then she was able to interview better. 
sometimes you can't help what you're born that you're born with what you're born with but you need to make you need to understand how that's coming across in micro expressions again self uh, emotional intelligence means self aware of your own energy and how you're coming across because the more you study yourself then you'll see how it's easier to connect with other people and the last thing here and I wanted to talk about was um clothing because you really, you know, people are like, oh, well, they shouldn't judge me how I look. That's not the way the world works. You know, even when, mm-hmm. even when Esther was going to go in to go see the king, you know, in that beauty contest, it was a year of her getting ready before, before the con- beauty contest happened. Before she went to go see him, she got ready for three days. Not only fasting, people, people focus on the fasting part, but she physically got ready to be beautiful because beauty was God's idea. That was part of her toolbox was having beauty. That's how she was able to catch his attention. It, you know, sometimes we spiritualize these things, but in the natural, she was beautiful. But she also had a helper who knew what the king liked and said, this is how you're going to look. And this is how you're going to win his heart when he looks at you. And so we have to do our part because that's how we're advertising. What is the image that you want to portray now that you understand it's 30 seconds and then after those 30 seconds and they, they put you from indifferent to friends and it's not really friends, they're just now ex- bringing you into their inner circle for a few minutes to see if they want to hear what you have to say, then use that to your advantage. But your clothing also advertises that. So if you were at the next station, let's say you're like you have these plans, you know, and you're like, OK, I'm currently here. The next level to where I'm at is director or whatever that is for you. Well, how would you dress if you were in that position right now? Go and start buying some classic stuff. You know, black is great because it means elegance. You know, it's it's the cream of the crop. You have a black American Express. That means you can charge all you want, right? <laughs> it's kind of like, so you can wear, you know, if all black and look very elegant and look very confident. For somebody who's an influencer, they're going to, you know, that's where you can put your bling to make it look a little different, you know? Um, you know, they usually are very colorful people, influencers. If you're a, a nurturer, you are you like more cotton things and flowy things. So you could just wear something that is elegant. If you think about where you want to be, you are advertising yourself by what you wear, period. And you might say it's not fair. Okay. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fair. But if you know the rules of the game, then you can play the game well. So whoever you're going to be connecting with, you know, who's your avatar? Who's the person that you are called to serve? Are you clear in that? If you understand who who you're called to serve, and you're not called to serve everybody, you know, there is riches in niches. What is your niche? And then start to dress in that niche, but a station above. So that when they see you approaching, they recognize that. They see you and they're like, oh, there's something about you. Again, rapport. Really, all people prefer others reflecting themselves. They see themselves in you, even in the way you're dressed, even in the way you're posturing. You know, if you are standing in a network event and you're not sure what to do, you clasp your hands behind you. And that gives you your shoulders back, your chest out, and you look like you're in a powerful state. When you are talking to people, you know, a lot of times leaders do this. Okay, what, you want to do this at the end of an interview. Uh, and then open hands, because what is open hands? You think of prayer, you know, beggar or, you know, I'm, I'm open handed. Um, so that's something I also wanted to say as well. Oh, I forgot the handshake. The handshake is very important. So you think about, well, in the West, in the West, right, in the Western world, a firm handshake is very important. So sometimes people from other countries, they have a, a softer um, handshake. So that will send different signals to us. But when you're giving a handshake, you might even not even think about it. <sighs> it's funny. So I had, I coached soccer and there was this one of the other coaches, he's like six feet seven. Um, and, um, you know, I'm all girly. I had a, I had a tank that's all blinged out, says coach on it. <laughs> I'm an influencer. And when he went to go shake my hand, he dominated my hand. Now he doesn't have to dominate my hand. I'm a foot shorter than he is to begin with. And look how tiny I am. Really, that's ridiculous. So he grabbed my hand and he kind of crushed it. So what I did was I gave him a firm handshake back. And when someone shakes your hand and they put their thumb over your hand, that's letting you know that they're trying to dominate you. Mm -hmm. So you have that ping 
that the person is confident and a dominant. So what you do is you turn your hand straight and you look him right in the eye and it's a firm handshake back. So that's what I did to this coach who is six, seven. <laughs> so I turned it back and I made sure my thumb was on top of his, like, no, we're not, this is not how we're going to play this game. And then I, my team beat the snot out of his team. So that was a extra cherry on top. So then he started calling me coach instead of like, you know, some other name. <laughs> <laughs> I earned his respect, but it started with the handshake. Now, you um, another thing for women specifically, for the women in here, when you are engaging with a with a man, you know, and a mano, you know, shoulder to shoulder, and they'll look, um, they'll look at each other. So I've actually done this with people and maneuvered myself from in front of the man to the side of him, and I got more engagement with him, and he opened up and told me more about his business when I did that. So there are little things that you can do with your body, just moving your body, changing the way you're sitting, or having open hands, you know, because the handshake is important. The way you open your hands, you know, when we see this, this part, that that is more of a dominant, like I'm going to rule you as well, right? Because it was high Hitler, it was this. Now, if he did this, not so powerful. <laughs> you know, if he's just doing this, no one's gonna follow the guy that goes, yeah, you know, but doing this, <laughs> you know, putting their hand out, dominant, it is a dominant thing. So even the way you move your hands around is going to establish and communicate certain things, right? This is the okay. You're like, I was doing this and all of a sudden I'm doing this. This is the okay. You see this and in your gut, you're getting that feeling of, oh, this is, this is right on target. Oh, let me go real fast because we're out of time. So, okay, building, building your team. So what do you do with all this information? This is what you do when you're building something. You get the dominant and the influencer together because they're the dynamic duo. They're the ones who are the great visionaries. They can draw the blueprint for you in order for it to be successful. The dominant is going to make sure that it, you get results and that it's done timely. The influencer is going to make sure that the innovation comes to the table. Now, you do not invite the nurturer to this or the concise person, not yet. <laughs> Once you get the blueprint, then you bring in the nurturer. The nurturer is going to be able to tell you what resources you have and how you can have it done so that way you're not wasting resources and then bring in suggestions of what you need in order for you to do your project. Then you bring in the expert and let them rip it apart like a monkey in a cupcake. <laughs> tell them, what you say to them is like, tell me all the ways this is not going to work. And they'll be like, let me tell you why this is a bad idea. <laughs> and they're gonna rip it apart. Let them rip it apart. Because what's going to happen is for the dominant and the influencer, because they're so broad and they can see the big picture, they're not detail people normally. And so the expert comes in, rips it apart about all the ways that it's not going to work. Then you can take that information, go back to the drawing board with the dominant and the influencer and start the circle again. Do not invite the nurturer. Do not invite the expert. That's not the role in that project yet. Once the blueprint is revised, bring back the nurturer who can help you with the resources. Bring back the expert who can rip it apart again. <laughs> save you money, save you time, save you frustration. And then once you feel like it's good, then you're able to proceed. So really quick, um, we do have a special discount. If you go to yourspiritualrock.com and you put in Dave September uh, 2018, you get 50% off of my um, micro courses and my services as a thank you for hanging out with us today. Also in the file sharing, we have this deck and PDF form for you. So you can go ahead and download that as a refresher. So, so Raquel, real Raquel, quickly, really quickly uh, I mean, people need to know what your courses might look like. Yes. So, so the courses are um, mostly in PDF form, um, and they're all meat. They're kind of like this. I have one called. Um, the, the, inspired by this one, you know, how to get everything that you want. So it goes into greater detail of some of the things that I spoke on tonight. There's another one on on prayer. Um, that is over a hundred pages long. That is, it goes through all the things of how to really set up your prayer life to get the results that God has for you. Because a lot of times people um, are, are not getting answers to prayer because they're not setting certain foundations up correctly. So it takes you through, through those steps. Um, again, it's over, that one's over a hundred pages long. 
There are other ones that are a combination of audio um, files and um, video files as well, um, and along with um, a PDF in the course. And then I have services mm -hmm. as well where you can get a discount. It's only through the end of September that you can go ahead and book them. So if you want to book any other services where I'm doing strategy work with you or any of the other services where we're connecting, you can purchase it now and we can always um, do them in October when you have some time, um, but you wanna go ahead and, and get the discount because it's half off. So, and that will take them up to Monday. Monday's October 1st, so yep. everybody has one week to take advantage of that. So. As you can see on the screen there, your spiritualrock.com is where you want to go to. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Raquel, awesome. So everybody want to thank you tonight. we a couple minutes over here, but uh, thank you so much for joining in tonight. And uh, Raquel, just for a moment, turn off your uh, slide projector. Oh, yes. So we can Sorry. bring you back to uh, full size. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So here I'm sitting for the presentation like this. What am I saying? That wasn't good. It was a comfort zone though, right? <laughs> yes, and so your hands are over here, so it's uh, still a dominant. <laughs> ah, guilty. Yes. Guilty. Yeah. Guilty. I'm gonna so through. next time I'll send you like this. <laughs> <laughs> I receive. Uh, okay, <laughs> everybody. It was a great night again. Again, go to yourspiritualrock.com and uh that's where you can get 50% discount, put in the September Dave into the comments. And uh, Raquel, if they have a question, how uh, is, is there a phone number on the website there or what? How, how do they? And, yeah, so they can either call, they can either text me there or they can send an email to me at um, admin at yourspiritualrock.com. Okay. And, and Raquel's back here every Monday night. She's an excellent co-host. So, uh, if you have a question, put it in the chat there, too, because she does that chat really, really good. So until next Monday night, be blessed. Have yourself a great week. If you're not aware of it, every Tuesday night, it's like tomorrow night, uh, mm -hmm. I do a one-hour teaching, and we're in an awesome series right now on mm -hmm. the brain in your heart. Did you know that? You have a brain in your heart. It's amazing. I've been studying the supernatural for 40, almost 50 years. But... Uh, long time since, what is it, 40 years, I guess, 1978. So, but anyway, tomorrow night, I mean, this is some of the greatest revelation God's ever given me in how to open the door into the fullness of the life and the supernatural that God has for you to do what Jesus did and even greater. If you're interested in that, all you need to do, there's no registration, just go to YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel is Living Supernaturally. So if you go to YouTube and do a, a search Living Supernaturally, no space there. We will come up number one. Or you can go to the website, livingsupernaturally.com, and there's a YouTube link right there in the top right-hand corner. So that's tomorrow night. Then again, next Monday night is our introduction to the month of October. Raquel and I will be back here to host that. And uh, until then, everybody, good night. God bless. Till next week, have a great one. Boop, boop.